Uh, well, I'm just going to start by, by asking uh, what attracted you to getting involved in this project? Was it the fact that Nils was such a sort of an every man? Was that part of the appeal? Well, first of all, it was, of course, because it was a Hans-Peter Mola film and we've done three films before. And on the, la the last film before this, uh, A Somewhat Gentle Man, we, it, was a, it was our first attempt at comedy, uh, a kind of sort of darker but funny kind of film that we wanted to make different from other comedies. And in this film, he wanted to take it further. And so that attracted me. And then it's fun to, it's, it's always fun to, uh, to play characters that doesn't reveal much about themselves, where everything is kept under the lid. I mean, like a pressure boiler. And this uh, man, he becomes really a pressure boiler because uh, he doesn't have the tools to handle his sorrow. He doesn't have the tools to, to, uh, to meet his wife after they've lost the child together. Uh, and so he's he's desperate in a way, but and it comes out in this killing spree that he he uh, takes off on. And though obviously you know it's quite a dramatic sort of very cinematic in many ways, but are you still able to put yourself in his shoes and see see him as a human being and as a father and be able to say what would I do in that situation type thing, the sort of hypothetical scenario that's involved. Of course, you you do that, uh, and hopefully I would react differently. But I'm I'm. He's, he's a man that is not used to, to showing or dealing with his emotions or any emotions. Uh, he's a very square guy. Uh, hopefully I'm better with it. So I won't end up, if something terrible happens to me, I, I won't take it out on other people and start killing people. Um, but but it's, it's, you know, the veneer of, of civilization is very thin and we all have the, the caveman inside us. And I, I don't have any problems understanding uh, that I could become a killer myself uh, uh, under pressure, and especially if your children are threatened or involved. You have it in you. Uh, hopefully you, you find other ways to solve the situation, and, and hopefully you live in a civilized society where the police can just put them in jail. I was wondering, you know, you're talking about the, the comedic element uh, to the film. Mm. And I was wondering how important do you think it is when you've got a film that deals with quite dark themes, such as this, quite severe themes, mm. that there is that, that moment of light relief. And I mean, when, the, when it's, the death toll comes up, that should be quite morbid, but mm. the sort of audience sort of laughing along with it at the same yeah, time. Yeah, you laugh along with, 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 uh, with the death toll, but also it's, it's, in a way it shows respect for all the corpses. Uh, you know, you know it's, it's not like a film where you just shoot 100 people in, and they just fall like... And nobody cares about them. Every, everybody gets his little plaque here. He's dead and he's dead, uh, which is an act of respect, I think. Um, what was the question again? Well, I was just wondering how important you think it is to have sort of moments of light relief. Oh, oh the, the yeah. moments of... I, I love the idea of, of, of uh, sort of breaking up genres and, 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 and bo both those two f last films I've done with Hans Petter has been about... Do, showing darkness and and uh, uh, and bleakness, and at the same time make it very funny. Um, some people think it's a kind of Scandinavian sense of humor, this or this ability to see to see the uh, the ridiculousness in the darkness. Um, but I but I think it's also you can see it in other filmmakers like the Kauris Mackey brothers or the Coen brothers. They have this. Uh, genre breaking uh, attitude and uh, and to me life and humanity uh, human beings are the the most beautiful fantastic silly uh, sick uh, horrible and silly creatures on earth you know and uh, if you can show that at the same time I think it's, it's fantastic <laughs> You mentioned obviously four collaborations now with Hans. I yeah. mean, what do you think comes out of that? So what's beneficial to, to a production when, when the kind of the lead actor and, and the, the director are so close? Because obviously it's something you've experienced with Lars von Trier as well. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's to the other actors. It might be threatening, yeah. uh, but 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 it, but it is. Uh, uh, we we know each other so well. We can we can speak very directly. We don't have to sort of dance around each other, and we uh, the communication is very much shorthand, and and we. We also, it's like good jazz musicians when they, when they jam together, you know, you get together and you play together and you can improvise a little and you can follow each other and, and it becomes music out of it. Uh, and that's the feeling you get when you, 
when you work with people you you know or share your musicality with? Of course, the, the setting plays a huge part in this. Adds to the, kind of the whole sort of ambiance. Yeah. I was wondering, was it as cold to, to shoot as it, as it looked? Worse, it was definitely worse. It was it was down to twenty eight thirty degrees minus, and and uh, that is frighteningly cold. I mean, you you can't move your face. Yeah. It really hurts. Yeah. I, I, as for you mentioned sort of Scandinavian cinema before, it seems to be going through quite a, a, a blossoming period at the moment. There seems to be fantastic films coming out, sort of you know from Norway and Denmark recently. Mm. I think I saw there's a whole kind of movement in Denmark, in fact, mm. with the kind of Northwest, the hijacking mm. uh, productions. Does, as someone who's been in the industry for, for such a sort of a long time now, do, do, you, do you notice that this is quite a, a good time for Scandinavian cinema? Is that something you're quite aware of? Uh, it's been going on in Denmark for quite a while. I mean, from from Trier and the Dogma movement and everything, a lot of interesting stuff has come out of Denmark. Norway has, uh, for being such a small country, a very strong tradition of uh, of uh, good filmmakers, and and they also had used to have municipal cinemas. Even the smallest little town had a municipal cinema where they showed films from all over the world that was not just the mainstream films, which meant that Norwegian kids grew up with seeing films from all over the world and from uh, art house films and all kind of quality films as well. Uh, Sweden has been a little behind lately. We had a strong tradition with from Sjöström, Stiller and Bergman and Weideberg and Trell and all those guys uh but we've we've been concentrating a little much on making uh detective stories the the last decades we have got some really good one coming out from sweden but uh, uh i i felt we we also have a problem in sweden because we only have there's a monopoly situation where we're the biggest cinema owner is also the biggest distributor and the biggest producer the svensk film industry and they if they don't like the film you're making you won't get it made it's one of my favorite films of the year this year, Swedish. It's just, We Are the Best. Yeah. Did you see that one? I haven't seen it yet. Oh, it's really good. <laughs> That's Morrison. Yeah. Mm. And, it's uh, really, really good. Of course, um, as for yourself, you, you do like to sort of mix between making uh, sort of films back in, sort of in Scandinavia and moving across to America, and you've got uh, Cinderella coming up. Is it quite nice for you to kind of move between the sort of more, I don't know, the, the, I'm not going to say bigger films, but the, the, the sort of more mainstream productions than, the, than those, and to kind of play around with that and sort of, and do they benefit each other, do you think, from moving between the two? Yeah, I think they do, and uh, I mean, you learn a lot from working with skilled, fantastically skilled people in Hollywood uh, that you can bring bring to to Europe and to smaller film crews as well. But, but it's also, it's not as different as you would think, because if you work with directors like like David Fincher or, or uh, Gore Verbinski, those directors, they work very much like independent film directors, even if they have a budget of $100 million. So, so around the camera is, is pretty much the same. And, and what you aim for is the same thing, to bring life to whatever character you have, whether the text is sort of very, um, very skeletal and very much just in service of, of bringing the story forward, like it, it often is in a, in a blockbuster movie or if it's more with more psychological depth as in an independent film. It's the same, you, you go for the same things, really. So just finally, our kind of traitor, is that enough when you're attached to? Our kind of traitor, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, we've finished that? filming it, yeah. Ah, so what's it's that done. one all about? Then? It's, uh, it's the John, John Le Carré uh, novel called Our Kind of Traitor, and it's about uh, a defector. You could say it's, in a way, it's built like a Cold War story, but it's a defector, but not from the KGB, but from the Russian mafia that is trying to defect to England and uh, uh, people die. <laughs> Great, and on that note, <laughs> thank you so much for your time today, much appreciated.